Welcome, fellow spiritual travelers. You're listening to the Akinkar Soul Adventure Podcast. I'm Heather Devare, your host for today, coming to you from the Temple of Ek in Chanhassen, Minnesota. Now, I would bet most of us want to make a difference in this world, you know, make it better. I know I do, especially as a mom to a young kiddo. But then I read the news. The fear comes in and my light dims a little. My mind goes straight to, how can little old me make a dent in the overwhelming pain and hardship out there? I mean, that would just take a miracle. Well, every moment of life is a chance to align with the divine. And as soul, an eternal spark of God, we can create everyday miracles. I'm going to say that again. We can create everyday miracles. And in today's episode, Be a Light to the World, we'll explore easy ways to claim our creative power as soul and uplift any situation life throws our way. God's love is the key. Here's some actionable spiritual wisdom from Sri Harold Klemp, the spiritual leader of Ekankar. He says, soul is in this life to learn to give and receive divine love And its ultimate goal is to become a co-worker with God. To be a co-worker means that no matter what you are doing, you make it easier for the next person. Now, making it easier for the next person, if that's being a co-worker with God, I'm in. Because how easy is that? And for me, super empowering. I feel my glow returning already. Now get ready for two stories today from a dynamic father and daughter duo. First, we have a rare gem of a story. It's an interfaith miracle, really, where a teen goes beyond just supporting her friend of a different faith. She takes creative action to make it easier for her friend to stay true to her religion and fit in socially. Next, Her dad, who is a senior manager in the data communications industry, tells his story about the power of a listening heart. They both make a difference in the world in their own unique way. So here is Gemma and Lawrence Chase. They spoke at a service at the Temple of Ek in Chanhassen, Minnesota. Well, good morning. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, a couple of the stories we're going to share really sort of underscore some of the main two points of Beck and Carl, the two main tenets, which are that soul exists because God loves it, and that the purpose of life is to learn how to give and receive more of God's love. So a couple of our stories, I think, are showing ways that we found those experiences to be uh, happening in our lives and opportunities to work with in our lives. And I think, Gemma, you have a quote from Sri Harold that you'd like to read to set the context for your story? Yes. Okay, so spirit will use you no matter where you are. You may or may not be conscious of this light and sound of God coming in, but you will find a way to give it back to other people. You simply give back some of the service of love to the world, to your friend, your neighbor, and it may be simply doing a good deed every day no one ever knows about. One day in summer, my group of friends and I made plans to go swimming at a beach. One of my friends is a member of a religion that doesn't allow her to expose her skin in a mixed company, except her forearms and face. And she didn't want her religion to stop us from swimming or hanging out. So how is she going to do that? How is she going to go swimming? She said um, she would go against her religion and wear a bathing suit so that she didn't feel different or left out. But I had a sense of compassion for my friend, and I didn't want that. Deep down, I knew that um, she didn't want to go against her religious guidelines or beliefs. How did you know that she felt that way? Me and my friends, when we hang out, would sometimes have deep conversations about our religions, and we would explain our religions to each other. And when she would explain hers, you could tell she had a passion for it and how she always did her daily religious practices. She had told me that observing that and practicing her religious beliefs meant a lot to her, so I said that I would bring leggings and a t-shirt, and she could too, so that we would be matching when she swam so she didn't have to feel like the odd one out. After I said that, then all my friends said that they would bring their leggings and t-shirts too. My friend was very insistent that we didn't need to do that, but we had already made up our minds. I knew that she was worried about the spiritual consequences for just a few hours. So how did you guys resolve it in the end? 
When the day came, we headed to the beach, and being a public beach, it was very crowded that day. We decided to see if there was a private place that we could swim instead. So we scoped out the area, and we found this steep hill that had a connection to the lake. There was a great area to swim. It was very secluded, which was perfect. We all tried to make our way down this steep hill together. We were holding on to each other and grabbing each other if someone slipped. We were all there for each other every step of the way. When we finally made it down, we set our things down and immediately jumped in the water and swam. After a time, we realized that there were some issues with this area. It was very rocky, and it was in the shade, so it was very cold. We decided to head back to the public beach. Once we got there, we all put on our leggings and baggy t-shirts to match her and make her feel more comfortable. We all went swimming together, and we had a fantastic time. That's amazing. So you were a light for her in that instance. What else did you learn from those experiences? Through this experience, I was able to help a friend live her truth and stay true to her religious beliefs. I was able to support her and honor her and that she could be with her friends and be true to herself and her beliefs. Being flexible for somebody you care about can mean a lot to them, and it could give them the gift of spiritual freedom. You know, it's such a good point that you know, Ekankar is the path of spiritual freedom, but it's not just spiritual freedom for ourselves. It's finding ways to give others the spiritual freedom to follow their own beliefs and honor their, uh, their, the path that they're on. It's a great story. I had something similar happen to me recently where I had the opportunity to travel for uh, our sales meeting, our annual sales meeting. But the condition of going to the event was that I had to work in this thing called the hub, which was basically a trade show type environment. And I'm pretty much by nature a little bit of an introvert more than an extrovert. So I find that working in the crowds for long periods of time can kind of be draining. Really? Yeah. I hadn't noticed that. Um, <laughs> And so, were you excited about this opportunity then? I was actually not excited about it. In fact, I was kind of dreading it uh, because it was, you know, day after day of, of interacting with uh, crowds, basically. But I did decide to change my perspective on it. I decided that I was going to actually embrace it as an opportunity rather than uh, looking at it as a negative. And I also thought, going into it, I vowed that I was going to look for ways to make it uplifting for not just myself, but for anyone I encountered, and look for opportunities to, to have a, an experience that was uplifting for all. So as I arrived at my booth the first day, uh, I had brought with me two coffees because um, I knew that energy would, might be an issue. So with the long hours and no breaks, I brought a couple of coffees. But when I got to the booth, uh, I noticed there was another woman there that was going to be working the booth with me. And she had been hired by the, um, the event producer as event staff. And I'll just say, the thing about the event staff is that they were wearing yellow T-shirts so that people could recognize them. And, but they had them doing things that were kind of um, strange, strange tasks to me. Like they would have them holding signs that would guide people to the, the lunchroom or the main hall or whatever, but they were just basically human signposts. And um, it got to a point where I would notice that the people would walk past them and wouldn't even see a person there. They would just see a lumpy yellow signpost uh, that happened to be breathing, but they wouldn't interact with them. And while I was there during this, the event, I was taking the opportunities to say hi to the signposts as I walked by. And, um, you know, greet them, how's your day, interact with them, because they were people, they were a soul. So anyway, as I get to my booth, I see yellow-shirted Sheila is uh, in my booth, and I thought, oh, here's an opportunity to interact with a person. And uh, so I had two coffees, so I offered her one, and she immediately, in a very gruff uh, East Coast accent, says, I don't want no coffee. And so I was, like, taken aback a little bit, and it took me uh, off guard, but... I decided not to react or, or form judgments or opinions about that and rather see her as a person, a soul, who may not be as happy to work this booth either. So through the course of the week, I started engaging with Sheila and asking her about herself and about her life. And I would just ask her or give her the opportunity to tell me 
about her, her life and her, her experiences. And as I did so, I would sing Hugh inwardly to really create a space just of you know, quiet grace and peace and calm for her to, to tell me about herself. And this went on throughout the week, and I found that she actually was an amazing person who had made, lived an amazing life. She was retired now, but she had been an educator all her life. More than an educator, she had been a principal of high schools. She had been directors of academies. She would actually opened schools around the world. She would lived in many exotic countries and you know, for, lived there for years to open schools and teach English and other subjects there. Really a rich, rich, varied existence. And it just reminded me, you know, that it's important to look past the person in the position. It's important to see soul to soul, give them the opportunity to be more than their job or more than their post. So throughout the week, I would introduce her to my friends and coworkers who would come to the booth. I would tell them about her. I would I would find opportunities to tell her supervisor what a great person she was and how great she, of a job she was doing. At one point, she had told me that her husband had been in the hospital or was in the hospital and had been in the hospital since May. And um, she told me that she didn't think that he would be coming home. And she, they'd been married for 40 or 50 years. And so again, I was singing you inwardly and letting the space be created for my heart to open to be able to understand what does she need from me or what can I give her or is she needing or wanting anything from me. And through the moments of uh, silence, I would just listen. And it, surprisingly, I got that she actually didn't want or need anything from me. She just wanted to be heard and seen as soul. She just wanted me to hear her story and share her story and see her as soul. At one point, I heard her on the phone to her son. And she was telling her son the best part about this week has been being able to work with me in the booth. And I knew that she wasn't talking about me. It wasn't me that she was seeing. It was actually the, the light of spirit, divine love, that she was able to have a part and be a part of or be with, you know, as we shared the moments together and the fact that she had been seen as soul and that was what she was responding to. And when you take a moment to really embrace life and the moment and live fully in the moment, then that's what shines through, you know. So my choice to choose to live uh, and look at this as a higher uh, opportunity rather than a negative really shone through. And that's actually something that I got from Gemma, right? So Gemma had told me that that's how she approaches school. You, uh, you mentioned that you, uh, rather than looking at school as a negative, how yeah. do you, what do you do? Um, I know that school is something that everybody has to do, and whether they like it or not. And I know that if they like it, they can find every good part about it and have something to look forward to. But if they don't like it, they're going to dread it. It's going to be the worst seven hours of their life. They're going to hate it. And I just, for years, always just tell people I, lo I love school. School's the best. And I know maybe in the back of my mind, it's probably not the best, but I might as well make the best out of it. So whenever I come home, I'm always telling my parents all the great things, just looking forward to the next day and just keeping a really good positive attitude. And I always tell my friends, like, great day, happy day today, like Friday, like we got this, like texting my friends, like good day today, happy day, you know, and just keeping everybody motivated. It's same with my parents, making sure that it's just happy day every day. And yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so that's where I got it from. <laughs> so in closing, uh, I would just like to read a short quote from Sri Harold Clamp. This is from the book Love, the Keystone to Life. And he says, This is one of the golden gifts of the people who are co-workers with God, the ability to listen to others. Thank you. Ah, 
yes. Listening, of course. Listening and making the way easier for others. We already have two practical and spiritual ways to make the world a more loving place. Another key takeaway for me is that no matter who you are or what you're doing, you can still act as a channel for God's love just by being yourself, even if you're an introvert like Lawrence. Now it's time for our next segment, Try Your Wings, where you get to test drive a spiritual technique that can help you be a better channel of God's love and give you greater love and freedom in your own life. In his story, Lawrence mentioned that he would sing Hugh to be a vehicle of grace and calm while speaking to Sheila. And that's what the Hugh can do, attune anyone to God's love and guidance in the moment. A great tool for tough conversations with your boss or spouse, by the way. Now, if this is new to you, Hugh is an ancient word, a sacred sound. And when we sing it, or hold it in our minds, we're literally infusing our being with the light and sound of God. No religion can claim to own the hue. It is a gift to the world. Anyone of any background or faith can work with this powerful spiritual technique. So if you want to experience the full benefits of the hue, a daily practice is a good way to go. Personally, I sing hue for about 20 minutes a day, and it's a way for me to fill myself with love so that I can rise above the stresses of the world and be a light in my own way. We'll start the spiritual exercise with a short audio clip from Sri Harold Klemp. Then we'll go directly into the Hugh song. Now, if you're sitting, it's a good time to get comfortable. But if you're driving, please keep your eyes open and on the road. Okay, here's Sri Harold. Well, spirit will use you no matter where you are and it'll look as if you're making mistakes and making errors, but you're not. It'll use you to spread a little of the light that's coming into you as a result of the spiritual exercises. You may or may not be conscious of this light and the sound of God that are coming in. And then the way to give it back to other people is not talk their ear off and telling you all about your great experiences, but you give back some service of love to the world, to your friend, to your neighbor, and it may be a good deed a day that no one ever knows about. Okay, let's sing you. You. Singing Hugh is such a reliable reset for me. But if you didn't have an experience this time, maybe try it at bedtime. Just keep trying because everyone is so unique. I mean, maybe your kind of spiritual exercise is just asking someone with the spirit of divine love, is there anything I can do for you today? It's all about what lights you up and opens the heart so you can share that gift of love with the world. Well, thank you for listening. Please check out the free spiritual resources in the show notes, including a link to the free Hue app. It's a must have for on the go spiritual stress relief and all the best on your soul adventure, whatever it may be.